Lord, whatever can that awful smell be? gasped Mrs. Flittersnoop, coming out of the kitchen with a smudge of flour on her nose because she was making cakes. Can't be the drains. They were cleaned only yesterday. Can't be something gone bad, for I turned out the larder this very morning. It's the professor, I'm sure, said Mrs. Flittersnoop. And it certainly was the professor. But before Mrs. Flittersnoop had time to get to the door of his inventory, out he burst with a little bottle in one hand, a garden syringe in the other, and his clothes stained. Amazing! he shouted. Listen! gasped the professor, getting his five pairs of spectacles so mixed up that he could see four Mrs. Flittersnoop, all different sizes. He always wore at least five pairs, since they each had a special function. Some were just for reading and writing, but others had a specific job, such as the pair of look-at-you-over-the-top-of spectacles, and the pair to wear when looking for the others if they were lost. The world will resound with discovery. I never knew I was as clever as this. The professor then uncorked the bottle and the simply awful-smelling odour immediately became so bad that Mrs. Flittersnoop had to bury her nose in her apron. This liquid, said the professor with excitement, will bring to life any picture to which it is applied. Look at this. He drew the liquid up in the syringe and squirted it over a picture of some apples on the cover of a book. Nothing happened except that the picture got wet. Very good, sir, I'm sure, said Mrs. Flittersnoop, moving back into the kitchen, but the professor dragged her back. Wait, he shouted excitedly. It takes time. Look, he pointed with a quivering finger at the picture. Ooh, uh, said his housekeeper. The apples began to swell up. The picture went all wobbly. Green smoke rose from the paper. The smell would have got worse, only... It couldn't. Then suddenly, four lovely rosy apples rolled out of the picture. Oh my! exclaimed Mrs. Flittersnoop. Together, both of them munched the apples. It was like eating an apple, except for a rather papery flavour. It is rather a pity, said the professor, spraying a picture of a box of chocolates to life, that it costs more to make the liquid for doing this than it would cost to buy the things. You don't say, said Mrs. Flittersnoop, taking a handful of the chocolates. But, said the professor, there are certain limitations to the power of the liquid. The things it brings to life go back as they were when the liquid dries off. The professor was now pulling out a book with a picture of a cat in it. Let me try this, he said. I don't know yet whether it'll work with animals and people. He filled the syringe again, while Mrs. Flittersnoop hid behind the door, because most of the professor's books were about wildish kinds of animals. Zzzz, went the spray. They waited, the paper bulged, the picture smoked, and the smell just as before. Then, meow, out jumped the cat. But goodness gracious, the next minute the whole room was full of an elephant. Amazing, gasped the professor, struggling out of the waste paper basket where the elephant had knocked him. Mrs. Flittersnoop slammed the door and rushed screaming all the way to her sister Aggie's in Lower Pagwell without even stopping to wipe the flower off her nose. The cat jumped out of the window and followed her, still meowing because the picture of it had showed it meowing, and it didn't seem to be able to stop. But most definitely awkward of all, the elephant squeezed its big self through the French windows and followed her too.